welcome to another episode of the F*** Face Podcast. It's the 120th time these idiots have talked. My name is Jeff Ramsey. With me, as always, Gavin Free, Andrew Panton. First off, I'm just going to get it uh, out of the way right now. Fuck my life and fuck my body. How are you guys oh, doing? My too, <laughs> what ha- dude. Oh, oh. Gee, how am I the most healthy one of the three? This has never happened. This is a rare event. Are you at 100% right now? Yeah, I feel pretty good. How's your ankle? 100%. Still hundred. Fuck. So it's it. Your ankle is that you could walk a marathon. I could potentially, hypothetically, but as we said, I'm enjoying this hundred percent lifestyle for a little bit. <laughs> ask me the same question, <laughs> Gavin. How are you doing, man? How's your? What percentage are you? Specifically, ask about my ankles, Gavin. How are your ankles? <laughs> about fifty percent. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I think it was was it like two weeks ago. Eric said I was the Andrew of that podcast, probably in the extra medium bullshit. Yeah, I am definitely yeah. the Andrew of. I have bad ankles. Oh no! Well, at fifty percent, would you say your ankles are extra medium? Uh, I'd say they couldn't get more medium than that. <laughs> Man, I, uh, listen. Before we get get uh, off on an aside, the extra medium thing really blew up in a way I did not anticipate. God damn, man! It's I have been never seen nothing, <laughs> <laughs> nothing but extra medium shit for the last week, of, a couple of days of my life. I've never seen so many regulation listeners. Turn in their comment leaver cards. I I had I saw people <laughs> saying they were becoming comment leavers just for this conversation. I saw people responding to those people who became comment leavers just yeah. for that. It was like yeah. an infection. This is like man. This this might be the most commented thing since since maybe the pencil or condiments. It's been wild. But Gavin, why are your ankles at fifty percent? Means you're in a cast. Maybe what's going on? <laughs> well, I'm getting the. Uh, I'm getting the hockey teeth in my wall fixed. <laughs> had to move. Okay. Had to move my desk, but the desk is really heavy, like without anything on it. And also, I didn't want to take everything off it, so I just thought, you know, I'll lift up one side, sort of shimmy it round, lift up the other side, keep doing that a few times. And uh, I did one side, the, the side that without, you know, just has like a printer on that side of the legs. The other side has like a big hard drive, the big server thing, a big RAID, and my PC. So I thought, oh, this one's going to be a bit more serious. And I gave it a few little test lifts. I was like, okay, I think my arms and back can take it. Here we go. And I just hoisted the whole thing up. Instead of lifting the table up, I sank down about two inches as both (laughs) of my ankles rolled. (gasps) And I just ended up just like twisted outwards, just like, oh, I just didn't ever consider my ankles to be the point of failure. And I think it's to do with the fact that I'm still... You know, I'm still recovering from the the pelvic injury from Does It Do, so I maybe wasn't stood as straight as I usually am, and I just <laughs> I did not expect to go downwards, and I ended, <laughs> and I ended up just rolling around on the floor uh, oh, once again, oh, no. contemplating my age and uh, <laughs> career choices. Can you walk? Yeah, but it, you know, it kind of hurts to like I still go on walks and stuff, but I just it starts hurting sooner. What, I just need one... like an MOT. I just need a look a look over from a doctor. I need Does x-rays. One side hurt more than the other? Uh, Is one ankle ankle worse than the other ankle? No, it was a pretty even pop across oh, both. Wow. I think pop? instead of... <laughs> I think instead of... Instead of going down to a 0% on one ankle, like breaking it, it just split the damage across both. So I'm just at <laughs> half on both. When, I, I think you're saying the word pop for effect, but <laughs> when you say it, I feel like I heard like... Yeah. Come out of yeah. it, it was the probably the most bone cracks I've heard oh. from my body ever because it was both ankles at the same time. It was deafening. <laughs> I, I'm gonna, I, these hockey teeth are troubling me, and I'll tell you why. I tried really hard to, to as a friend, to help <laughs> this process. I just got the impression you didn't want my help or my, uh, or my presence at any point. I could have helped you move this table, man. I spent four I, hours moving back into my bedroom last night. I can do it. Yeah, I, and I thought you know it would be really fun to try and fix the wall, but then I, I realized that the people who hacked it to pieces were more than happy to repair it. So I thought, oh, I might as well take the free repair. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that yeah. makes sense. Uh-huh. 100%. I just had to move my desk. In, a, in the end, <sighs> uh, after about eight hours of... Not being able to walk good, I came back to my desk, I took everything off it, and I moved it with great ease. Wow. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so I'm trying to, I'm visualizing, I don't know, if you remember in old wrestling games, in like the top left corner, there's the outline of the human body, and as areas get hurt more, it becomes like increasingly red. So right now, I'm just seeing you with like deep red ankles. Is yeah. that the only issue? Where else on the body? Because it sounds like you both are in trouble. <laughs> Imagine the... <laughs> 
What happened to Gavin? What happened Did to both of you? Did we lose Gavin? No, no, no here. We're, we're here. Gavin started talking. Do you think his computer <laughs> restarted? Oh, uh, you can't hear me anymore? Oh, my no, God. You're back. No, you're, now. you're back. You stopped talking. Oh. We're a technical difficulties podcast. We were just talking about <laughs> No, this. we're not. In the we're not a technical difficulties <laughs> podcast. Yeah, I said, I, uh, what I said was, what did I say? Oh, I said, yeah, imagine um, you're playing Doom and the, my ankles are the Doom guy and they both have nosebleeds. I said something <laughs> like that. Okay. <laughs> it's a wild visual. Okay. Oh, I see the, the screen, the old Doom. Yeah, where the yeah, health. Yeah. I get it. Okay, yeah, yeah. I understood. Dude, when he gets all like, oh, he gets all knackered up. Yeah, I'm sure so my original got... delivery was better than me trying to remember. What I just no, said. but what about your upper? Because you had the other injuries from before, so we got like a yellow midsection. What's going on on the rest of the scale? Yeah, yeah it has the hip. amber on the left hip. I'm probably at eighty percent. Oh yeah, pit boy. <laughs> uh, I would say, so I'd say yeah, both ankles crippled and uh, <laughs> left hip. Left hip's just got like half a bar. <laughs> Okay, how about you, Jeff? What's going on with you? <laughs> well, I, mine's a whole thing. I feel like we're running through a greatest hits of Jeff's misery um, <laughs> in the last week. I don't know. I was talking about this with Eric the other day. Well, first off, I think I had just had the bike wreck after when I saw you guys last time or when we mm -hmm. recorded last time. I was apparently running on adrenaline uh, and the excitement <laughs> of having a story to tell. Everything went downhill pretty much from, from that oh, night no. on. I don't remember what the situation, what the living arrangements were at that point, but there's just been a confluence of of just fucking myself right in the butthole. Well, what was it that Eric wrote on on Slack? Yeah, that was that was the big turn because before last time when we left off, there was discussion around that you were going to hit a bunch of baseballs tomorrow morning. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> so, yeah, this was on uh, the 26th of August. Eric in the in the f face Slack wrote. Hey, after seeing Jeff today, there's no way we're hitting baseballs next Friday. <laughs> yeah, well, which is I'm, tomorrow now. I'm walking again, so that's good. <laughs> uh, that's that's your status update. Is that you were walking again? Yeah, I'm walking again fairly well. Uh, I don't think I'm hitting baseballs or anything. Um, for, we'll just go from there. So for the the bike wreck, uh, the ankle it turns out it was very very sprained, and it, that was real bad. Um, the knee scabbed up real hard, and do you guys ever, um, I don't know if you were scabby boys when you were growing up, but I always, I was always falling into something and getting covered in scabs. And you know how, like, when you, you get a scab on an elbow or a knee when you're a kid, and then if you get up or sit down too fast or bend your arm too fast, it cracks the scab in half? Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. doing that a couple times a day right now. And so it's like, <laughs> oh, it just feels like it's never going to end. And it's just like, anytime I move, the scab on my knee cracks and it's excruciating. And so the whole left side of my body is pretty sore. Um, I don't know if it's Gavin sore, but it's pretty fucking sore. Um, it was compounded by the fact that I don't know if this had happened yet, but you know, I was having having the dudes come in and, and work on the house, uh, fixing up the bedroom, and uh, I may have even made a joke about how uh, I thought it was going to take like two days, and and it was probably going to take much longer. Well, I moved back into my bedroom last night, which was wonderful, but um. I underestimated how difficult my life would be being kicked out of my own bedroom for a week, like not able to go in at all because uh, it was like a clean room because they were having to like de-texture the ceiling and then re-tape and float and put the, the whatever the shit on the ceiling is to smooth it out. And it took, I mean, they were fucking working until like seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, uh, midnight, night for last, every night. And um. They just, I just didn't have access to my bedroom, which means I didn't have access to my closet. I wasn't ready for that. I didn't know when the first guy walked in and said, hey, what's up? I'm Dave. I'm, I got muscles and tattoos, and I'm going to put the trim on your wall. <laughs> I didn't know that from that point on, I would have no access to my clothes uh, or anything I owned, really. Uh, and so I have been living in one pair of shorts, two pairs of underwear, a pair of socks, and three shirts that I just happened to have in my laundry. But you couldn't just nip in there? Like no, well, no. It's my closet. It was boarded up at like like <laughs> my the whole room uh was taped off very heavily because they did the walls first and then the ceiling and it was it's all been ceiling work since so i it was all like taped off in a way and then like the scaffolding and stuff which is very heavy was pushed <laughs> against it so i could nip into the room but i couldn't by myself move the scaffolding or any of that stuff and so I've just been, I've been, I've been living like that for a week, just doing laundry every night, which is fine. I can live with that. But you that just nip to Target and get a few <laughs> sets of undies. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was 
I, Jeff uh, is maybe the funniest person to have this happen to because you have a fucking clothing line. You have a whole <laughs> extensive shirt collection I don't make based underwear. around you. I gotta start making underwear. I gotta start making underwear. <laughs> I have tons of clothes. I just didn't have access to them. Uh, but, I, but I did have some stuff in the dirty clothes, so I made it work. I, make, I improvise. I make it work. It's fine. I adapt. I overcome. I was in the military. I know how to do it. Uh, but that, that, like, not having access to your stuff, also... This is going to sound really lame, but uh, I have two stress relievers in my life, right? Now that I don't drink. I have bicycles. Out of the question. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> I can't get on my bike right now. So my backup is baseball cards, right? I play. I, I, when I get stressed out, I organize my baseball cards. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I sleeve stuff. All locked up in the closet. No access to any, any of that <laughs> shit. It was all in the closet with the clothes, right? <laughs> oh, no. So I just had no, no way to like relieve stress. Sat Friday, Saturday, I was in bed. I could barely, I couldn't really, really get out. I had to have my leg elevated. It was swollen. Uh, so my whole weekend was basically fucked. And then bed, I don't know if I, I don't know if this had happened yet, but we had to move my king size mattress and everything, our, our bed, into the library. It was the only room in the house we could fit it, which and is it's where, a much you know, the shelves room are. as well, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, I found out that uh, first off, the ha this side of the house is unbearably hot. Uh, the air conditioner doesn't work for shit over here, uh, <laughs> and. Uh, I knew that. I knew that because they had told me that, and they told me it was unfixable because of the way my ceiling is built without ripping out my whole ceiling. And now that I have ripped out a ceiling, I have no desire to do that again anytime soon, let me tell you. But I hadn't experienced it. Uh, but now I spent a week living on a mattress on the floor like I'm in college again, where like I have to very carefully get out of uh, my side because... One inch away from the bed is this desk and this chair and all of this equipment. And I sprained my ankle three or four more times just trying to get up to pee in the middle of the night, trying to get like through the <laughs> Jenga of this room. So like I was in a box, incredibly uncomfortable. Another thing you don't think about when you when you do when you displace yourself in your own home and have complete strangers in your house, half of your house uh, for eight to 12 hours a day every day, for some reason... Every spot in this house that I could stand or sit or occupy space in has a direct line view to those guys. <laughs> I was watching, not that they were watching me, just like every time I turn around, no matter what room I'm in, they can see me and I can see them. And it's just really discombobulating to feel like, even though those guys don't give a fuck about me, they're busy doing their job, but just to feel like every time I turn around, there's dudes, I can see people. Oh, uh, like a window away from me. And there was nothing I could do about it. So I just felt, I felt like I was in a fishbowl for a fucking week. Then, uh, night before last, God damn, I was fucking done with it, you know? And the guys were like, the, the guys were like, it's going to take another day to do the seal, to finish the ceiling. It's taking longer than we thought. And Emily was like, no, nah, get it done tonight. We got the painter coming in tomorrow. Cause that's a whole other thing. The guy that did, does the trim doesn't do paint. The guy that does the ceiling does paints the ceiling but doesn't paint trim so we got to bring in another guy mm. who paints trim i'm pretty sure i'm in some sort of a like uh <laughs> scam but whatever it's fine you you do what you got to do in austin to get people into your house to fix stuff because every house in austin is under construction and if anybody that's been in austin and has driven through a na the one block of a neighborhood can see that every house in austin is under construction right now so it's like it's it, you just you got this was like these were like the 20th people we we tried to get to even come in to do this job so it's like, fuck it, whatever. We'll hire a third guy to, guy to paint the trim. And thank God he did, because he was lovely and a Boston Celtics fan. But anyway, so I was ready to go to bed at like 9 o'clock night before last. And uh, we have these giant picture windows in the library that look right into the picture windows in the bedroom. And, I, and those guys, Emily wouldn't let them leave until they finished. They didn't finish till after midnight. <laughs> and so I just, and I couldn't like, I'm not going to lay in my bed in front of them <laughs> and try to go to sleep. <laughs> So I was kept awake, which really sucked too. Uh, so I've just been like, uh, I guess you would describe it as depressed. I don't know. Um, Emily made sure I saw my therapist this week. Uh, she said I wasn't doing well. Um, but that's not all the bad stuff. Uh, so all that has just been put, that's, that's put me in a state. Yeah, a bit of a low. The jock itch persists. Oh no. God. It's never I, ending. Uh, oh my God. I, I, it got so bad. I contacted the doctor this morning and I'm like, listen. I, I, I tried two different rounds of pills with you guys, two different kinds of creams. I'm still getting cream. As a matter of fact, I ran out of the cream you gave me, but I had a refill, so I just filled it myself and kept going. I'm trying to, to be patient with this thing, but like, is there what, like, what else can we do? And they were like, keep at it. Put more cream on. 
<laughs> oh no! Like, Did you tell them it might be some sort of virus from the lake? Uh, no. <laughs> they're, 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 I mean, I went there and physically sh- showed it to him. The doctor looked at it and he goes, "Like, oh, yeah. yeah, like that's that's jock itch. That's tinea, as it's called." Um, but they're kicking, they kick it, they're kicking my itch can down the road. So I'm pretty <laughs> like the left side of my body is inflamed and exhausted. And every time I stand up or sit down, I crack a scab and yellow pus drips out. And then it has to be <laughs> oh, And it's just, it's just brutal. And then the right side of my body is on fire. And so I'm just incredibly uncomfortable in my own skin. And then last night we moved back into the room and it was like four hours of lifting heavy furniture. And so today I woke up to just every bit of arthritis in my body was mad at me and so like i could barely stand because of my spine it just fucking sucked and uh emily says she can tell when i'm not doing well because she'll walk in the room and i just have my head in my hands and i don't realize i'm doing that but uh, <laughs> oh my god she said that every time she walks in her room i have my head in my hands which is why she was like be, sh- be sure to go to therapy this weekend talk about this so i did um but all that that's out of all that, you know, we've got the the Jeff's body falling apart, bike wreck. What would be one other classic thing that happens to me that we could throw into the mix? House is clearly an issue. Hmm. I'll let you guess w- real quickly, and then if nobody's going to get it, I'll just I'll, I'll uh, a baseball card fire. Mm, baseball card fire. The fridge never happened. that you're not going to get a replacement no. for. Fridge died. is okay. a fridge is a great one. I'll just uh, I picked up Millie from school Monday. We needed to go to the grocery store, <laughs> and uh, so I'm like, okay, so. Head up to the grocery store. Stop at the stoplight before the grocery store. Bam! Rear-ended. Come <laughs> on! Bam! Rear-ended. I got fucking rear-ended. Oh. Less than a month after I got my car back from when I fucked it up, and then they took it to oh. get it certified, and then they got into an accident. I get rear-ended again, which is still less than like six months from when Millie got rear-ended. My car's been in three accidents this year. <laughs> What does everyone have against my car? <laughs> I have no I fucking idea, dude. But now I'm without a car. I mean, my car's drivable, but it's all fucked up in the back. And I got to go through this process again where the only there. place that'll fix my, my kind of car they still get certified by BMW is 40 minutes away. And you got to go down there and take the car to them and then they'll evaluate it. And then they won't let you leave it there. Then you got to go back home and wait two weeks for them to buy. And I'm in that process again. And I was so fucking excited to be done and have a fucking healthy <laughs> car again. To now immediately be starting at scratch all over again. I still haven't even been able to still go through insurance. I still haven't even been able to take it to get evaluated to see how much it's going to cost to repair. I'm so fucking done with this life. Oh, my God. That is an endless uh, stream of shit. That yeah. might, this might be the worst week ever on face that we've heard from you. It's like Groundhog's Day, man. I just I don't know. I don't know. And, and and I'll be honest with you. There's a little bit of I, there's a little bit of joy in hearing your misery, Gav. And it would probably would have felt a little better if Andrew had something bad happen too. Because then it's like you know, misery loves company. Yeah, and I'm a I'm a pretty miserable guy. But uh, God, now I'm, I'm just I'm, imagining you in the front seat of your smashed in car with your head in your hands. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, did it hurt? Uh, no, nah, I was, it was, I mean, I had a headache or Millie had a headache. I had a sore neck, but, it, but it was fine. I, I'm, was it I'm, some, that was nothing. Twat on their oh. phone. No, I felt so bad. It was one of like, I'm pretty sure it was one of Millie's high school classmates. She oh. was a kid. She was, oh, she was really great. sweet and terrified <laughs> and I felt bad for her. I ended up spending, trying to comfort her. I'm like, listen, this is your first accident. <laughs> and she's like, and I'm like, is it your car or your parents' car? She's like, it's my car. My parents pay for it. And I'm like, that's okay. And then she's like. You know, I'm like, are you, you're not hurt. I'm not hurt. We can both drive away. This is like, if you're going to get into an accident, this is the first accident to get yeah, into. Yeah, don't worry. My car gets rear-ended <laughs> once a month. <laughs> this happens to me six, seven times a year, apparently. So, <laughs> Yeah, sign, sign my book of people who have rear-ended me this year. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, this is my car wreck book. Yeah, just like write a little note, maybe. <laughs> you know, so the, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling, I'll be honest with you guys. I'm feeling kind of defeated right now. I love the idea of like a hotel guest book for your car. <laughs> and everyone has just like a bunch of blank lines and you just get people yeah. to sign in every time they hit you. I think it's a problem of space though. <laughs> There's no book big enough that could fit the volume that Jeff gets hit. We're going to constantly it's be like, needing new paper. All these dates and names. <laughs> there are demolition so derby vehicles that have had less impact than your car, Gavin. Oh, it is ridiculous. <laughs> My car has been hit through no fault of its own three times this year. Three fucking 
times this year. How is that possible? Oh. That's a lot. That's oh. an excessive amount. Yeah, it's like we're magnetized to assholes. <laughs> oh. So that anyway. sucks. Okay. That's my so, update. So to put a positive spin, you're back in your room. Yeah, I, I slept in my own bedroom last night. It was wonderful. And the room That's good. is fucking gorgeous. I'll send you guys a picture. Oh. It looks like I'd love to see, see it. it. Let's see a picture, it's, like a post-shelf picture. Yeah, it's here you go. I, I Let me see if I took any. I did. Okay, here. Oh, that looks so cool. Yeah, that's worth it. Is that, that the best awesome. picture that Jeff has ever taken? It it <laughs> looks like honestly a photo of a five star hotel room. Jeff, like that thanks, is man. like the executive Jeff, suite. Yeah. Did you take that photo? I did. I did. I did. Wow. I took it on, I, I, that's what happens when I try to take a photo. I will say I'm I, genuinely impressed by your photo taking skills. Yeah. Here. That's well, an incredible like you've got on photo. The, on it's on the wide photo. lens. Yeah, it's on the point five or whatever. The only thing yeah. is, I didn't take the laundry off the little bench in front of the bed before I took it. So it's let's get you can see some dirty laundry. There. <laughs> but I was just excited to have laundry. Anyway, so that's what my bedroom looks like. I, yeah, I don't know if you can really see the te- the the stuff on the walls, but it's all like painted the same color. The ceilings painted the same color. It's, yeah. It's, it is worth it. It is worth it. Oh, it's totally. It's totally worth it. I'm scrolling up to the, the photo you took before. It looks like an entirely different room. It's amazing how much oh, of an that's impact good. I that do those that. choices you did made. I'm real jazzed. That's awesome. I'm yeah, real it looks great. That. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you to the, the, the fleet of people that are required to, to do that, like the seven different companies or whatever we had to hire. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the, the, so it's, uh, that, that part's nice. At least now I'm convalescing uh, and, and in my, my bed and my space, and uh, I, I do appreciate that. Um, also, man, this fucking, I, first off, a lot of people coming, a lot of people approaching me this week telling us we owe Andrew's mom an apology. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we record these pretty far in advance, FYI. Uh, we had already recorded the follow-up episode to this when this when last week's episode hit the extra medium and the end cap episode hit so andrew and i both had already changed our minds and agreed with gavin uh in the previous the audience hasn't even heard the episode yet and we've definitely apologized to andrew's mom at this mm-hmm. point um, yeah. boy we're getting hammered pretty hard so <laughs> and also also turns out nobody agreed with us everybody's on <laughs> gavin's side almost everybody <laughs> is on gavin's side someone came up with it with their own grid just from my description and it's pretty yeah. much the exact same as mine except vertical and it looks nicer yeah eric you must be livid yeah gavin gotta say i'm not thrilled <laughs> um, <laughs> uh i mean it's really shocking when you're right you know you're right, and then you have to like really put into perspective how many people can be wrong in the world at one time. Uh, <laughs> it's really kind of sad. I feel sad for them, uh, frankly <laughs> embarrassed for them that they would be this wrong. Um, I think that's really kind of what it boils down to is, uh, you know, you got to get out there and, and do your best every day. Um, you know, it's it's a team effort, and uh you know, it's uh, it's not it's not an individual thing. It's it's just you know you can't you can't let the chatter get to you. You have to go out and just play the game the best that you can and and do what you can every time. So but have um, you thought about maybe mm-hmm. just opening the mind, maybe seeing what all the fuss is about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again, it. Gavin, it's like I said, um, it's you got to get out there and you can't let the naysayers and detractors <laughs> uh, get at you. You know, you got to go out there and do what you know is best and and do what you believe in your heart and uh and just play the game you know how uh that's i think that's the important part we i I, by the way last week you were saying how um because we obviously threw this in the merch chat for discussion and you Mm -hmm. were saying that the only person who agreed with me in there was maxi right um yeah that actually wasn't the case right it's pretty sad to see you know again i gotta go out and say it's pretty (laughs) sad to see so how many people are wrong how many people you've respected in your life and uh, again, there's a lot of chatter and there's a lot of people saying a lot of things, but it's not up to them. Uh, you know, it's um, <laughs> it's just uh, frankly, it's tough. It's tough when you think that uh, everyone's got your best interests at heart and they don't and uh, they're wrong the whole time. So it's pretty rough. Sometimes sometimes it happens with your own family, like when your wife says, so what's this extra medium thing? And then you explain it and she goes, no. And then, <laughs> and now you're betrayed, you know, just on like a marital level. So it's, um, it's difficult. Uh, well, what it, we skipped by in, in the merch chat last week was we, we said that Maxi agreed with me, of course, but also Tony wrote uh-huh. extra yeah. medium, I guess would be mathematically exactly the measurement 
between small and large. Right. Yeah. And he'd and he'd be wrong about that, which is really like the tough part of the whole thing. You know what I mean? Is that you know because we is what like Tony. And you leave it up to yeah. That's the thing. We like Tony, and and it's really hard just to see him be that wrong uh, the whole time, especially from a merch standpoint. You know what I mean? Like this is the guy we're trusting with the face with the face brand. Yeah. Um, you know what? You know what's stuff. great about this conversation? We've had it four times. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, it gives me a unique perspective of this is what it must have been like to listen to me say I never said I would eat a pencil is what just happened. <laughs> to watch somebody just be so clearly wrong and everybody being against it, but an unwillingness to move in the slightest. <laughs> this has been a great exercise for me. What a what a crazy time that was. I, I, in your defense, Eric, can, can I say, in commiseration, yeah. and, yep. and I've said this before and I'll say it again, I feel dirty. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't like <laughs> yeah. I don't like what's happened. I don't like that my opinion has changed. I feel like there's something wrong in me that makes right. me agree with Gavin. And, and I, I don't res- I don't respect Gavin or his opinions. <laughs> So it's really, it's like, it's, it sucks, dude. It's yeah. su- like, there's an, like, I'm not doing good internally. Just yeah, trying so to, tr- trying to get over this. I get what you're saying that it's like on a personal level, you know, now just it imagine hurts. that's just like a million fold where you yeah. just have to see that in everyone else and just, and you're embarrassed, frankly, for all yeah. of those people. And it's, it's really sad for them to live in a world where that's what they think extra medium is. Nick that's said all. this is Eric's pencil, but he doesn't have to eat a shirt. <laughs> that's true. I, that's, I never I committed to eating anything, and I think that's probably what's going to let me off here. Um, it sounds as though if I'd have asked anyone else at the company for an extra medium, I would have been given a medium. So I See, really here, you I, know, unlucked out with who I asked. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's the solace that I have in all of this is that people go, right, but it's Gavin. Why did he ask that way? And I'm like, right, no, I understand. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> Speaking of does it do, I guess it's come out at this point. I hope. People yes, like it, it is. We'll have the the premiere will have been. I mean, at the point of this recording, it's tomorrow, but um, it'll the first two episodes will be out by the time. This episode is out, um, so we'll take a break and then record some more. We had a great meeting to come up with, like, the rest of the season. Like, a great meeting about that. So, I'm excited to do more Does It Do. Yeah, it, it was. It, it felt like maybe a preview of uh, of what Office Day is going to be like tomorrow, because tomorrow's our first Office Day as well. And it was me, Eric, and Andrew. Gavin didn't show for some reason, but uh, we Wait, like went through... Uh, it was on your calendar, I assume. When was that, Tuesday we did the meeting? It, it was Tuesday. Tuesday from 1 to 2. It was yeah. on his calendar. Yeah, we talked about it uh, in the last recording. Uh, we scheduled it and everything. We, you were there. Uh, but it was like it was like one of the most fruitful meetings we've ever had. We went through all the products for the rest of the season, and we came up with all the props and all the tests and everything. And I'm, I'm, I was excited about Does It Do before, just with the idea of it when I came up with it. And then I was really excited after we filmed the first two episodes, uh, more so episode two than one, because I thought two was stronger. But I'm way more excited now because the stuff that like that we were coming up with together was so much better. It's so funny. I, I, I'm really excited to get back in there and film again. So that meeting yeah. has haunted me uh, in, in an unexpected way, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. I talked to Gavin that evening. Okay. And I, I talked to him about the meeting. And I said, uh, we had a meeting today. We we're talking about things for the show. How it do. What? And then he corrected me. And I was so embarrassed, and I'm still living in that embarrassment. <laughs> I haven't stopped thinking about the fact that I said "how it do" as the show name to him. Yeah, it's like, it no, that's the question me. you ask after "does it do" comes out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it was so bad. I feel so bad about it. <laughs> how, how it do? What <laughs> what what was going on with your brain there? I don't know. Maybe I think there's a graphic in the first one. Or how it works, me. I don't know. It was like just who, my brain the, was the somewhere wire. else. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where it was, but it was bad. It was an embarrassing moment that I haven't been able to stop thinking about. How it do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't thought about it since ten seconds after you said it, but I'm glad it's been a one of you. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, it's. I knew. I know it's one of those. But literally, it's all I've been thinking about for two days, <laughs> constantly. How it do? What an idiot. So tomorrow is our uh, is our office day, first office day. Is everybody going to show up or is everybody going to be there? What time is it at? I mean, right now we were going to hit baseballs from 
10 to 12, but now no, we're not. So we no. can just move it and go noon to four or we can do 11 to four. I mean, we have we have like some space to play. But yeah, I'm free for it's my whole day. I have my whole right. day. Uh, marked off for it. I'm, I'm, I, when I was like, is everybody gonna? I was more, uh, it was very pointedly uh, uh, focused at Gavin. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. understand. Yeah, I'm free after 11. Okay, perfect. Awesome. That's very exciting. All right, I will, uh, I will make an adjustment to the calendar invite. Fantastic. I'm excited. I don't know what's, what that's gonna bring, but I'm excited for it. Did you guys see this uh, image on Instagram the other day? Emily showed no. it to me. I sent it in the Slack. It's uh, somebody. Who's the naked person in the background. I mean, I think it's somebody who's probably wearing shorts. But uh, it's, it's, it's somebody sent it to the face Instagram and it's uh, somebody named Elizabeth. And uh, it, it appears that they got a go, go now tattoo on their finger, which that's awesome. <laughs> we were so excited about uh, Emily, me, uh, Tamara and go, go now. Joey uh, are all going to go get that tattoo. <laughs> we're all going to go get that tattoo on our fingers together. Uh, to commemorate the event. And we're pretty excited. Are you going to do it on the same finger? Yeah, I think so. I got room you there. You think so? I don't I, have anything I feel like it should be on the on the index. I was going to say, yeah, like a pointer finger. Yeah, it's like It a, should be the finger oh, that you point. It's like get a move point. on. Yeah, like yeah. go, go now. Go here, pointing here. Oh, yeah, I can do that. That's a good point. I Well, maybe they were looking to hide it a little bit more. But That's um, fair. <laughs> I'm, I'm all about... I mean, there's no hiding my tattoos. So yeah, I'll get it on my index finger for sure. That's a great point. Was the, is that the middle finger that they did it on? I think so. Because I respect that too, I guess. Like, go, go, now fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the way the I read instruction. it. I, yeah, exactly. I really like it on the middle finger. Yeah, maybe keep it on the middle. Good point. I, right. I think no matter what finger you put it on, it works. It's a great, it's a fantastic tattoo. Anyway, so I just wanted to shout out to Elizabeth for getting that tattoo. And uh, just so you know, we're all going to rip off your tattoo and get it ourselves, too. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the crew that was on the boat that survived. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do when I'm playing a game or just even browsing stuff online is to have a podcast or music going. Recently, I've been listening to a lot of 90s Canadian music. It's been great. One of the best parts of the experience has been using my Raycon wireless earbuds to do it. Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever with optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit. These earbuds are so comfortable, and they will not budge. Trust me. They also have incredible battery life. They give you 8 hours of playtime and 32 hours of battery life, so I'm never worried about them dying. It's great in that respect. And Raycons are priced just right. You get quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands. It's no wonder Raycon Everyday Earbuds have over 50,000 five-star reviews. Other things I love about these earbuds, they're three customizable sound profiles. You have pure sound, which is perfect for podcasting, balanced sound, which is great for classical jazz, blues, rock, pop, folk, and bass sound, which is great for hip-hop, EDM, R&B, reggae, it's fantastic. So no matter what you're listening to, you will have the optimal experience with one of these sound profiles. Also, noise isolation is another fantastic feature of these. Being able to block everything else out and just focus in on what you're trying to listen to. It's awesome. Raycons are great. I use them on the go. I use them just relaxing at home. Doesn't matter what I'm listening to. Music, podcast, it's fantastic. So go to buyraycon.com face today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash face to score 15% off. Buyraycon.com slash face. It's summer. Lighten up. Dad grass is great anytime. They can help you chill out before a big meeting or be a new replacement to that evening glass of wine. They are the perfect pairing to everything summer has to offer. Dad grass is legal organic hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. Deadgrass CBD products are made with 100% organic hemp that's easy to dose, and the effects come on smooth. They offer a variety of products from their token smokable pre-roll joints, as well as hemp flower and variety of CBD tincture drops. Enjoy the effects of CBD while keeping a clear head. All Deadgrass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over, and it ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S., Go to dadgrass.com slash face to check out their products. Whether you're looking for a new buzz or a chill way to enjoy an old favorite, Dadgrass will leave you in a euphoric mood. Right now, Dadgrass is offering our listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash face. Go to dadgrass.com slash face for 20% off your first order. That's dadgrass.com slash face. 
Today's episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. I shop online all the time, and so I prefer to buy essentially everything, whether it's clothes, uh, tech stuff, groceries, you name it, I like to shop online. The issue is, though, I never know what the promo codes are, searching for them is such a hassle, but thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Now imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button appears and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. Now I've saved money using this on clothes, food items, tech. It's fantastic. It's a great product. It's so easy to use. It's simple to install. It's fantastic. Honey doesn't just work on your desktop either. It also works in your iPhone too. Just activate it on Safari and your phone and save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show. I never recommend something I don't use. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash face. That's joinhoney.com slash face. I had an interesting thing happen that I feel like I need. I feel like I need to tell this story because there's a possibility that somebody could have this happen to them. It was a fascinating, it was a few days ago, just a, a normal night. I got a call from my mom. She said, hi, uh, there's something wrong with the TV. Can you come, can you come fix this? And I was like, well, what's going on? What's wrong? Because I assume if it's broken to the point where she's calling, I'm assuming I'm not going to be able to fix it. Because she's not tech savvy, but it's not, you know, it's, it's, an, it's an extreme call. Yeah. She's like, I don't want to talk about this over the phone. You have to come over here. You have to fix this. Oh, no. And I said, okay. So I went to her place <laughs> and I look at the TV. And as soon as I look at the TV, I'm greeted with an image of the Vancouver Child Kicker skateboard in my closet. And I'm, I'm uh, thinking like, what? How did, what is going on? How did this happen? I was expecting it to just be like a pixel issue. Why is a photo I took on this television? And so I said, what were you doing on, on the TV? And she said, I was watching Disney Plus. I said, okay, <laughs> so you're on. And then I put all the pieces together. What had happened was for Christmas, I bought her an Amazon Fire Stick because she wasn't able to watch Disney Plus and she wanted to watch only murders in the building. So she watches Disney Plus through the Fire Stick. I got an email maybe like two or three months ago from Amazon saying, hey, we have like Amazon photos. If you use our app we'll give you a $15 gift card. So okay. I signed up for that. And when I, I signed up, it immediately just transferred all of my camera roll onto oh. their service. Oh, and so, no. So then I'm piecing together. Oh, so, so this is, so it's my camp. It must be the Amazon photo thing. So I said, how did this happen? She said, well, I got up to use the bathroom and I came back <laughs> and all these photos were on the screen. And the first photo that appeared when she came back was a photo of my driver's license. Because I guess I took a photo to sign up for like a medical app or like a COVID thing in the past where I had to like send in a government ID yeah. to register for it. <laughs> she thought that her TV was like hacked by Anonymous. She thought that this was a deep. That's why she didn't want to tell me over the phone. She thought it was like an enemy of the state. <laughs> like she somebody had hacked. Yeah, she, she was convinced because it was like all these personal photos. And I have never been more relieved that my camera roll was filled with just things that make me laugh because I could just see in my head for certain people how disastrous this could have been. <laughs> so I, I sorted it out. I turned off the screensaver mode for it, went into Amazon Photos, got rid of my, my camera roll, deleted everything. But I just a warning to people, if you have Amazon Photos <laughs> and there's somebody in your life that is using your Amazon account through a, a stick or whatever, just be aware. Just be cautious, because that could be <laughs> that could be such a bad that scenario could have for been people. Catastrophic for you. It could have been disastrous. We we have that. We have one of those little like uh, Amazon uh, like Alexa TV things in the kitchen, mm -hmm. and uh, we set that up to so that we could put fo like Emily wanted to put like photos of the dogs and stuff. Well, dog now and stuff in there. And uh, when she left the, after the first day she set it up, I just filled it with pictures of her sleeping with her mouth open that I've taken from like, <laughs> trips and stuff. <laughs> so then she did the same. So now if you ever come to my house, just look at the, the screensaver on the Amazon because it's just us fucking with each other 
uh, trying to one up each other with more embarrassing uh, photos. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, that's great. Well, I'm glad Gene Hackman's not trying to hack your mom. <laughs> Is that a good movie? Enemy yeah. of the State? Yeah. I haven't seen it in such a long time. I mean, I, I haven't seen it since it came out, but I remember enjoying it. Were you having to quickly think of all the stuff in your camera roll? Like the moment you saw that on there, were you just like in a panic? Like how no. fucked am I? No, like I, I kind of, I, as I said, my, I know what my camera roll is. It's just, it's 99% things that made me laugh. And then like the occasional picture of like f face merch that they're like send to a family member or something being like, look at this. This is cool. Like a boys Zimmer type thing. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I was more relieved. It wasn't me processing what was there. It was the relief of knowing that there was nothing I would be embarrassed about on that camera. <laughs> it was a huge sense of relief. It was like winning a thing that you didn't know you entered. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> I just felt it was important to share because I, I could. There are so many versions in a weird way. It was almost disappointment that it wasn't more embarrassing what was on the screen. Because it would be a funnier story. My, mine would have had a bunch of pictures of my ass bruise <laughs> as I've been tracking it slowly change shape. What's the current shape? Uh, it's pretty much gone. Okay. Well, don't yeah. worry, buddy. We're filming Does It Do Again pretty soon. Can I do it from like, can I sit down? <laughs> <laughs> you cannot flop all over the goddamn place if you want. Yeah. Every, every one of those spills you took was 100% self-imposed. Oh, a hundred percent. Real dumb. And impressively. <laughs> that one where you kicked the TV, that was very good. Was I don't even think that. the bad one was in episode one. I think the bad one's in episode two. Yeah, it was in episode two. It was during the race. <laughs> yeah, when I thought I was I was so when I heard you hit, I was so convinced I was gonna turn around and see your like wrist snapped in half. <laughs> oh god, man. I've been thinking <laughs> this is gonna it hurt so dumb. much more after than it did at the time as well. Like it kinda hurt at the time because I was like Ugh. But the pain went away, and then just later that night, I was just like, ah. <laughs> I, uh, I've been thinking about, um, I've been thinking about, uh, getting into downhill mountain biking. What? No. Yeah. What? Yeah. I've been thinking about it pretty seriously. Um, absolutely not. My that sounds like a terrible idea. My therapist does downhill mountain biking, and I've been thinking about it for a long time. And I, <laughs> I got, I got, I got really kind of keyed up on it. The idea last week to the point where I was even looking at bikes and there's a place called Spider Mountain up northwest of here that I, I thought I could go try that has like a ski lift and stuff. And I was figuring like, I'm not trying to hit like 20 foot jumps or anything, but I could hit some like six, seven foot jumps. And I, you know, I'm in my older age. <laughs> I can like, I could take like the, I don't know, like the blue line down, not the black diamond or whatever. I figured I could probably handle that. Clearly, uh, not today. Um, I need to recover a little bit first, but I was, I, I finally, I've been kind of hiding it. But I kind of I decided to admit it to Emily that I was seriously thinking about doing this and, uh, you know, looking to get get into that. And she she was like, I'm gonna show you a photo. She was like, just yesterday, I, I was cutting one of my clients hair and he showed me his arm and on his arm were five giant scars, like giant scars. And I asked, like, what in the hell happened? His uh, his like he went on vacation. And he went up to like, I don't know somewhere where they have mountain biking, Zion or <clears throat> somewhere, and uh, decided by himself he was going to like get into mountain biking. Same thing as me, like dude probably in his 40s or something. Uh, just saw some TikToks, thought it looked cool, and uh, was like, wife is out of town or something. So he just said, like, I'm going to have a trip by myself. I'm going to go up and do something I want to do. And uh, she showed me a photo of him above the hill, smiling and waving at the selfie. <laughs> and then she showed me a picture of an arm that I shit you not looked like an accordion. <laughs> oh, oh God. God. His arm was in, it went like, it, it went like, <laughs> it went like from the elbow up like maybe three inches and then to the right and then far oh. to the left and then to the right and then back to the left again and then there was a wrist. The dude broke his arm in so many <laughs> different places. It was like, a, it, they had, it, it was like, they were doing like experimental surgery to fix it because nobody had ever fucked their arm up that bad and he was by himself oh my God. and he, uh, he had to drive like, I don't know, 20 miles a car with a accordion <laughs> arm to get to a hospital. And so that's slowing me down a little bit. But uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah. Can we vote on this now? Yeah. I mean, it's a unanimous. No, you shouldn't yeah, do nope. this. I don't get how you have a session and your entire point of session is that everything in your body is broken. And the walk away point is maybe I should get into downhill mountain biking. Yeah. I don't understand how that gets suggested. Uh, well, it, it didn't get suggested. I suggested it. I see. 
And they're yeah, like, I, I was, do it's this my as well. Idea. Yeah, I, I've known for a while my, my therapist uh, mountain bikes. Um, it's something we okay. talk about from time to time. We both love bicycles. So it's like a, a common point of, of uh, conversation on occasion. I still think I'm still that definitely slowed me down. That and my knee have and my ankle have definitely slowed. No, I don't want to mountain bike with my therapist. I just want a mountain bike. <laughs> but I yeah, I uh, I'm still considering it. I don't know. I'm, well, I'm, th- me, th- thanks for the feedback. Uh, I'll, me, take, I'll take it. You guys are on the fence. I want to throw some weight on this to slow you down further. So the accordion arm guy, right? He crashed, yeah. had the drive. Now imagine in that drive, you're going to be in 25 car accidents from point A to point B. So you need to factor that into the paint. This is not, you're the, you're the least, yeah. you're the least, not qualified isn't the right word, but you are the, the, like, the, the number one not candidate for doing this. But you should be at the bottom of the list. That's how I'll get to the ambulance faster. <laughs> Jeff, I want to, I want to side with you. I think you should give it a shot. Like, Thanks, man. Yeah, man. So we are hitting baseballs <laughs> tomorrow or not? No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. And that was because of. Oh, uh, like, I'm, I'm still pretty. I'm still <laughs> okay. I honestly. So is a curb that okay? No, I still say yes. I'm still gonna go. Yeah. Yeah, but there's there's not gonna be any curbs on the mountain. You're gonna be like Jeff Kent. Is what's gonna happen. You're not gonna be able to hit baseballs because you broke your wrist doing wheelies on a bike. <laughs> like it's you're. This is a disaster. Your yeah, baseball would, career is being impacted by this. It would be a disaster if this ended my baseball career. But to be fair, we could end up with a new bike jump stunt out of this. Uh, I think we will. Would. Will. We'll see. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not in a hurry to get back on my, on my bike on the street right now. So We could potentially watch an arm become an accordion in slow motion. I don't yeah. want to see that in slow motion. I don't either. Oh, man. <laughs> 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 My best friend in the army, when he was in high school, he was a big skateboarder, and uh, oh god, he uh, oh no, he was stories. he was filming uh, like skate part, skateboard parts with his friends uh, when he was like sixteen, and he like I don't know what he did, I don't remember what the trick trick was. I think it was just like a like a rail grind or something. It wasn't crazy. It wasn't even down steps or anything. It was on like a flat rail. Uh, but he like he slipped and landed wrong, and he snapped his arm in half. His <sighs> and uh, from about I would say about halfway up the up the forearm and so it was like and there's a video he showed me in the army of him screaming and holding his arm and running around in a circle not knowing what to do while his arm was just like flopping oh. around in every different direction uh before i guess they stopped filming oh that's uh, terrible yeah Ugh. no it's pretty gross. Was the, pretty that gross. was um that was a re- mtv show when i was growing up was it scarred mtv scars scarred maybe sick I show remember, it was just yeah the only thing i remember i was always too scared to watch it but i remember watching it a little bit. I remember there was one where a guy was like grinding down a rail and then he fell and the rail had like a slice lip at like oh the edge of it. God. And he like cut his ball sack open on impact. Like it was it was bad. It's a bad <sighs> show. Oh. That's a show that's hard to believe that was just on TV, like middle of the day. How could that be televised? I don't know. I never I was too scared to watch it. So I don't maybe it wasn't as graphic. Maybe it was like all they would like lead in and like explain it but not show anything, but <laughs> <laughs> it was just not it was not what I was interested in. It's terrible. There's a line. It's where physical comedy becomes not funny at all. I feel like Wipeout is sort of the sweet spot or Jackass is yes, is maybe even better. I don't know. Yeah, exactly as soon as it's per- the- permanent, as soon as you watch something permanent happen, it's not funny to me. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird. Maybe it shows how poor my priorities are. If I'm OK, I try to laugh immediately on impact. Mainly for everybody else. <laughs> like when I, I fell out of that chair heart, immediate laughter. Just because it, <laughs> it's loud. I need everyone to know it's okay. Uh, I was telling Eric all this shit earlier in the week. We were recording uh, one of the other podcasts and uh, the Austin one. And he told me, he was like, well, you're gonna get, I guess you're going to get a root canal next week. And let me tell you, if I don't show up for <laughs> face recording next week, it's because... This is the only way I won't show up for fish recording next week. It's because it, it will be if I wake up Monday or Tuesday morning with a toothache and I find out I do need a root canal, I'm going <laughs> off the grid and nobody will ever see me again. I'm just walking away from this life. I'm just going to walk away. I'm going to be like the Incredible. I'm going to be like, I'm going to be like Bill Bixby at the end of the, an episode of the Incredible Hulk. I'm just going to walk away and then, or like, what's his face? Carradine in, in Kung Fu. You'll never see me again. That's it. That's my exit from this life. I just, I will quit. I will throw up on my hands and quit. You an appointment <laughs> next week? 
for that? For a root canal? No, I'm just saying, like, are you going to the dentist? No, like, I got nothing. What? I got nothing. Okay. But it's so like, if, it, if, if like, out of left field. yeah, no, it's just like, if this, if this trend continues, oh. the house problem, Jeff falls off his bike, fucking ra- rash issues, but it, like, if it, car accident, like, it's either, it's either fridge or root canal. And if and if one of the fridge I can live with, if root canal happens next week, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm that's a wrap on Jeff. <laughs> yeah, you're living. You're living several of my nightmares. I don't know if you ever watched. Did you see the night of? It was an HBO miniseries. Oh, uh, about the cab driver. Yeah, I watched the first episode. John Turturro is in that, and he plays a lawyer. And it's like an eight episode arc, and it's about this murder and trying to figure out what happened. But there's a subplot through the entire series of he just has a rash. That will not go away. And it gets progressively <laughs> worse with stress. And it's just this this commentary. On, I don't know how accurate it is. But it seemed like dealing with rashes just is the worst thing ever. No creams worked. None of the pills worked. Just him bouncing from doctor to doctor. Not getting any resolution. Having to go to like weird uh, like street vendors to find unorthodox methods of, of healing. You're living my fear of having one of these rashes that just will not go away. Yeah. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah. It's been fascinating to observe this. Andrew and I played Halo the other night for the first time in <laughs> a few months. And um, he said something kind of insane to me. Was this in Halo or was this like post uh, podcast? You I said, said that you'd insane. hit like, you said you'd hit like 320,000 gamer score or something. Oh my God. Oh, are you talking about what we, this was a different, what we said after the podcast. Yeah, it might have been post podcast. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> And he and Andrew was just like, I bet by the end of the year I could get. And in my head, I'm just filling in. I'm like, oh, I bet he he thinks he can get four hundred thousand by the end of the year. The guy says, I bet by the end of the year I could hit a million. What? So the conversation was. What? That I'm glad that there's a time difference between us because there are times where I have burger confidence. Burger confidence will <laughs> often hit at around ten thirty p.m. for you guys. Which is not, I don't feel comfortable. I don't want to disturb you. I'm not going to text that time. <laughs> I had this thought where it's like, ah, I should maybe, I bet I could hit a million points. I should make a bet with Gavin that I could hit a million gamer score. I'm at like 320,000 right now. I bet you I could do this. And then some time passed. And I realized, nah, it's ridiculous. There's no way I could do it. But then, and describing to Gavin this moment of burger confidence, I re then believed that I could do it. I was back in. I was like, this seems possible. I'm going to give this a go. As soon as we stop recording, I loaded up Paw Patrol. It's getting some achievements. We're, we're finalizing details. It's not, it's economically. I think I could do it for a game. You have to beat like six games a day every day until the end of the year. Yeah. Well, it's, it seems yeah. like, a, but like not even, you don't need a thousand points per game necessarily. I think there are so many, yeah. probably like 30 minute, 600 point games. It's a cost issue. Like I was willing to take the bet, like if if it was going to be four hundred thousand, I would have been like, yeah, you know, I may I maybe put like five hundred bucks into that bet. He said a million. I was like, I'll give you ten thousand dollars if you do that. And then he was trying to f- <laughs> he was trying to figure out what he would what he would have to do if he didn't make it. And I just suggested uh, run the marathon. And he was like, no. <laughs> hey, <laughs> like he wouldn't even want the marathon to be a part of losing. <laughs> So your conversation with Gavin like rehydrated your burger confidence essentially. Mm-hmm. How many? So we have a friend named Ray who used to work with us who has a pretty pretty lofty gamer score. Has he hit a million yet? Oh, oh he's, he's way over. I think he's over yeah. two million. Oh, okay. Well, shit. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you can do it. <laughs> I was found that so funny that he wasn't even the first person to hit a million gamer score who has the name Ray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> we met that other dude, right? I met him a few yeah, times. Stallion? Yeah, Stallion. He's great. Yeah. He's a nice guy. Yeah, I mean, I'm inclined to believe you could do it as well. It's a fucking lofty goal. I think 700, 700 uh, fuck, dude. Fuck. Four, uh, you really think you could? I, do, yeah, I think I could do You don't think you've blown through all the fast games already? No, because I stopped doing that like 360 era. So I feel like I have all of Xbox One and the current generation to work with. I have a few on Xbox One that are like the easy ones, but. You would never be able to go outside. No, I don't think it would be as extensive as you think. There's a lot of like in an hour get a thousand point games. And I haven't done the extensive research to know how many of them there are. I could be so wrong and that I think there's hundreds where there isn't. But you couldn't even write 20,000 things down. <laughs> I don't know what that has to do with anything. 
That's just a side fact. <laughs> so how much gamer score are you going to need? I'd need uh, like 680,000. 680,000 <laughs> gamer score. And what month? This is September. So you have five months to get. Well, this was okay. This was a, a week ago. Oh, the fact I'm that sorry. we're now in so September five, does five make it months more. and a week. I've, uh, I've had this gamer tag since, uh, well, probably c coming in on two decades. And I've got 95,000 gamer score. Yeah, I but think you, you kind of suck, though. I suck, though. But still, that's so much. It is a lot. I thought Gavin was going to bring up what happened in Halo. Because Halo recently added ranked doubles. And we haven't played in a very long time. Uh, so I thought, oh, it'd be fun to do because when it came out, we did ranked and that was fun. So why don't we do, we qualify, you have to play 10 games and then you get qualified for your rank. Uh, and it was double specifically, which is a new playlist. We went through the 10 games. Gavin, your previous rank was gold four. What is your current rank after playing 10 games? Where did it place you? Um... Can you before he answers? Can you just go because I haven't done it, uh, and I, I imagine a lot of the audience doesn't know what the fuck that means. What is the scale? So it, it starts. Go? I think bronze is as low as you can go. Okay, and it goes bronze one through five, and then silver one through five. So is five and the highest bronze? But and then it, five the next, is the, the highest next, bronze. Yeah, and then it goes then silver you, one, silver one. Yeah, okay. you go through that scale all the way up. I think it goes silver, gold, platinum. And then I want to say then it's Onyx, right? I don't think there's a diamond. I think platinum and then the highest level is Onyx. Oh, I thought it was a diamond. Maybe there is. I don't remember. I think you part. just skipped it because you were Onyx once. Ooh. Oh. Well, I, I, I worked. I, my first ranking was gold four. And then I slowly, that was the rank it gave me after my 10 games. And then I was slowly able to climb gold five. And then I eventually got platinum one was the highest I've been. Okay. And uh, there's a diamond. And last night or the night before I got ranked. Silver four. <laughs> it's the most disappointed I've ever heard Gavin in my life. Now, do yeah, you think I, that's... I was ready for something shitty, but I, that made me sad. Do you think that's because of your ankles? <laughs> I don't think so. Why, what, what, what do you ascribe your dramatic drop in Halo score to? Not very good. <laughs> <laughs> do you think you've gotten worse or did people get better? I hope it's the second one. <laughs> I went up one. So last time we did this, I was platinum one. I got ranked platinum two. So I went up one level and Gavin got dropped down an entire class. And it made there me very was... happy. Like for, I don't know if, it's, if the audience is going to pick up on this, but I've known Gavin for a very long time. There is so much legitimate pain in the way he said those things. Like yes. there, was, there was a lot of really subtle but raw, raw emotion in that. The fact this, is, this has got to be, you've, you must be crestfallen. Eric's loving what it. Makes it. What Eric's makes it even funnier? Fucking, I've been fucking. I'm laughing so hard. I'm dying. Oh my god. Oh fuck, it's so funny. What do you attribute that to? Not very good. So you're old, your body's falling apart, and you suck at Halo. It's like we're twins. So many oh. outs. So many outs to say, like, oh, I was distracted by this, or this thing happened, or whatever. And it was just brass tacks. Yeah, I fucking suck. What, what made it so enjoyable was the fact he had to play 10 games to get that. He had to put in so much effort to just be disappointed and insulted. Oh, oh man. Oh. oh. And it's my, it's my favorite game. I love Halo. It's a great oh, scene. I was going to, as a joke, delete the game after that happened, but then I remembered it's like a 120 gig game and I really don't want to read that Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. It's, uh, well, you know, you probably, you, the, the hand eye coordination is probably not what it used to be in your body. And, uh, you know, the eyes, they, they <laughs> as you get older, they, they lose a little bit of their sharpness. So, uh, ugh. All right, I got to try and get to gold this week. Yeah, let's, let's try to get you there. Yeah, do you think? Do, do you think that now? Do you do you think a strict regimen of practice and playing will help, or would you? Would it be easier to build a time machine? Um, <laughs> probably the second one. Yeah, it's kind of what I'm thinking too. Probably more plausible too. That's the luck, though. <laughs> I 
I really want Andrew to try and get a million before the end of the year, though. I it financially is like if I was looking at, I did a little bit of research, and it seemed like some of the easiest games, the average price is like ten dollars. So I have to buy like six hundred games. I'm looking at six thousand minimum. What if we lot. tried to buy like someone's bulk video game collection off eBay, like all pre-used? <laughs> <laughs> I think most of these easy gamer score games never had a physical release. Ah, it's a tough thing to work around. I'm not opposed to it. I could get four hundred thousand. Uh, how long could that reasonably take? Uh, Tuesday. I think half a million has got to be the goal. Half a million? Yeah, I think a million is impossible. Yeah, I think a million is half a million. I I would sneeze at half a million. That's easy. I could do that. No problem. Yeah, and if you don't, yeah. you have to run the marathon. No, I mean, we never said that. That was pretty. I mean, that was off the table before. So wait, I, I, I feel I feel a legitimate bet forming. I think yeah, I, I agree. There's some we got half some a million, here. half a million gamer score by January first, uh, 2023. Okay, and you are at what right now? I'm at like 328 thousand. So you need like you need to get roughly uh 180 thousand. <laughs> oh, it's easy. Oh, it's so easy. Between now and which is the equivalent of a. How is that? 180 games. He has 329,621 currently. So you have to you have to 100 percent roughly 200 games to do this. Yeah. In five months. Oh, that's that's so easy. Now, what it, Gav? What it, what are you prepared? To, I, I surely you're not going for the full 10,000 for such a paltry gamer score as 500 uh, half a million. What 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 are you prepared to to pony up? Um, I mean, what was fair? Probably like a thousand. Ah, oh, he's gonna do it though. That's he's. Mm. <laughs> what if, what if it's not money? What if it's something? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What do you think, Andrew? I have no idea. I feel weird about the. the mm, I'm not going to request money. I do think it's funny that we cut it in half and you cut the amount by ninety percent. That was a fascinating <laughs> move. Well, I was that basing it on. I that, thought I would give five hundred for four hundred thousand, and then yeah. you went five hundred thousand, so I just doubled it. Um, I don't know. I did offer <laughs> rights to my gamer tag. He said oh. I could pick his new gamer tag if he doesn't. Yeah, do it. I can't change it unless that, that was something I put up. Now that's interesting. See, that's I, I don't great. like the I don't like the money angle. I think it's better if it's punishment or something like that. Yeah, why don't we keep money out of it? I have to do something if you do it, and you have to let me change your gamer tag if you don't. I well then it become I don't know. We'll think about it. We'll see if we can think of something. All right, we're in the early stages of this. We're in we're, there. There might be something here. What What if Gavin? If if you do it, Gavin can only wear large shirts for no, uh, <laughs> two months. No. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. That's no, pretty good. That's no, it's pretty not. Good. If I'm buying a hundred and he has games, to take a, and he has to take a not... photo in a large shirt and send it to you every day to prove that he's in a large shirt. <laughs> no, dude, that's not think, worth it. No. I think you're underestimating how miserable that's going to make Gavin specifically. Probably, yeah. I just don't. That's not a trade I would make. Okay. Well, listen. We can keep keep working uh, behind the scenes to figure this out, and maybe we can come up with a solution by next uh, episode recording. But you're running the the clock is ticking while we figure out what uh, what the reward slash punishments will be. How long have you had Andrew Panton as a game attack? Uh, uh, two thousand eight. Okay. Hmm. It's been a while. Long time. Quite a long time. I would never personally change it. Well, you better uh, you better get half a million gamer score then. I can't believe that I'm going to end both of these fucking recordings rushing to play Paw Patrol. That's the, <laughs> the shock of the year. <laughs> what, so you're going to be starting before we decided to bet? We talked about that the previous time, because as Jeff said, I'm, I'm running low. With, no, but I said under the assumption that this will be a thing, I need to start getting reps in. I'm running out of time. We're now in Q4. Is that right? Oh, no, that's not true. That's not right. No, Next month. No, right. Next month's Q4. <laughs> okay. Maybe, it's, maybe it starts Q4. Maybe. Yeah, we'll work it out. We'll figure it out. I think there's something here. Good deal. I think maybe something in person. Like maybe Gavin has to deliver something to your door. Or... I don't know. That doesn't, that, that, that doesn't move the needle for me. Gavin having to leave America, get on a plane, go all the way to Canada with his busy schedule to then like, I don't know, clean your I bathroom think of or it something. that way. Yeah, maybe. Like it's an it's a <laughs> incredible inconvenience and imposition to him. Yeah, let me maybe. buy a hazmat suit and I'll get around that. I'll schedule a lunch. <laughs> and then I'll get a great, I'll get a, a miss, a guilt basket. Eric, <laughs> Eric really wants us to stop talking. He's told us to wrap up 30 times. Uh, so we should probably do that. Thank you uh, for listening to another episode of the Face Podcast number 120. 
Uh, tune in next week. If if there's no podcast, it's because I walked away. Bye. Don't walk away. <laughs> Please don't. Hey, guys. Major League Fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of Face. Check out the butthole Tupperware. The gang talks about their favorite Japanese foods. Is a Burzoi the longest dog? How are Panton's ankles? Let's assume the guys talk about medium some more. And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of Face.